Maya, the most powerful playable vault hunter in Borderlands 2. Canonically strongest, at the very least. So strong that the very concept of doing battle with the inhabitants of this planet is simply beneath her. Maya's going to be putting in as little effort as possible, so while she's rudely awakened from her power nap in the snow, let's go over how she's going to be handling things. There will be no using her action skill, nor most of her abilities that deal damage. Not going out of her way to find unique gear of any kind. No grenades, guns, melee, jumping on enemies, nor hitting anything with a vehicle. This is a challenge run, and having these bonuses enabled is basically illegal. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm not anyone's babysitter. If someone gets hurt, or somebody hurts somebody else, then that's their issue to sort out. I'm just here. Should I accidentally go against any of these, I'll be resetting the area by way of saving and quitting back to the main menu. While I could of course stroll straight up to Handsome Jack and explode his spleen with a twitch of my thumb, I instead decided to time travel forward to see how Mordecai was doing defending Sanctuary from an assault. I didn't want to make it too easy on him, so I pretended that he was helping, until I was a high enough level to... I mean, I mean, I was, I was always a high enough level to... to re recompense. Shut up! I got bored and made my way back to see what Claptrap was doing. He'd apparently pissed off the local bully mongs, so I asked them politely to return his eye. Now, you may not know what this skill does, so for those that don't, each point spent on it gives a 10% chance for it to trigger when I take health damage. When that occurs, the enemy that dealt it receives the same amount of damage that I took. Again, health, not shield. This means that I can only deal as much damage as my enemy can deal, and only as long as I have the health to support it. And only about half of all attacks that hit me. It can be improved with a class mod, but I never got higher than an 80%, and you'll notice what enemies' damage numbers look like. And due to health limitations, I didn't use that class mod most of the time. I needed the regeneration more. It might genuinely be faster to jump on enemies at the beginning. Ignoring the time it took to farm the XP to unlock Recompense, it took over 20 minutes to get to Knuckle Dragger. I say again, despite the MASSIVE level difference, it took over 20 minutes to get through the very beginning section to SEE the first boss of the game that's overall so unimportant it doesn't even have a health bar on the GUI layer. The fight went by so slowly that I figured it wasn't really even worth doing at my current level, so I left and farmed a bit. You know, just a little. I now do as much damage as I ever will, and my health regenerates almost as quickly as it ever will. Really, those are pretty much the only things necessary to this build. Otherwise, max health and crit damage are the only things worth caring about in her skill trees. You heard me right, crit damage. You'll see. For the rest of her points, I put them into skills that did nothing, so there wasn't an annoying point total in the bottom left for the rest of the run. This is basically the complete build. Try not to be too impressed as you're taking in its magnificence. The boss goes down, and I make my way forward after HOURS of agonizing farming. Pretty quickly, an enemy ended up standing underneath me, and I had to reset. So thanks for that, you prick. Hammerlock is good people though, so as much as I loathe dealing with the bully mongs, someone's gotta help the poor guy out. Hammerlock repairs Claptrap because I may be powerful, but I don't know a thing about fixing machines. Claptrap suggests that I have a word with the local bandit leader about getting a ship. If I'm gonna show off how beefy Maya is, I'm gonna need onlookers to stand around and be impressed with how powerful she is. This involves getting shot a lot, and eventually getting to my second, sort of, boss fight. Does it require an intro cutscene, or an on-screen health bar to count as a boss? Both? I don't know, I'm not a boss officiator. Whatever the case, this consisted of me getting shot repeatedly and waiting for them to destroy their turret, and themselves. The fools. The absolute fools! The damn stupid fools! I get into the turret that I fixed with my mind powers because Maya is an expert at complicated repairs, and break open the path forward. I have a ton of health to work with at the moment, so most encounters sort of just look like this. And honestly, I never knew you could just go over. You learn something new every day, yeah? This part scared me a bit. Things go by really slowly, so an enemy that won't attack is a problem. You can still get most enemies to swing at you by getting into their personal space, though. So while it's uncomfortable and inconvenient, progress is progress is progress. I get to the next enemy of a leadership role. Not a boss I would ever want to work for. The combat is going relatively fine. The enemies are starting to do a concerningly high amount of damage for how much health I have, though, despite a MASSIVE level difference. Even better though, the game counts this as bouncing on an enemy, so restart I must. I make my way back, and if the game isn't going to fight fair, then why should I? Unsurprisingly, the rest of the fight went by really easily. I spent both more time and effort clearing out his compatriots. I ship out from one frigid wasteland to another, and I need to get a car. Some lesser, totally not a siren helps me hack into a catcher ride because Maya isn't good with things like operating machines. I roll up to Sanctuary in my sparkle wagon and they ask me to go find a spare battery for their TV remote. Apparently some guy named Reese stole it and ran off. Some of the locals were hurt by his actions and attacked him. I tried to help sort things out, but they just weren't listening, so I had to reload the area. I came back and an animal found itself under my foot, so I had to reset again. Now, the third time, I came back and tried to show them that violence wasn't the answer to civil disputes, but they ended up dead. I guess they learned their lesson. 
Turns out, Reese didn't even have it. He gave it to one of his buddies to power his RC car that he just bought. Which doesn't make any sense. I explained that the model he's using is rechargeable and therefore doesn't need batteries. Not really a listening kind, but his friend stepped in to make things easier. Thanks, bud. They have someone stationed out here specifically to watch over the remote to make sure it doesn't get lost. I guess. And I gotta ask, why do I have to put the batteries in if he's hanging out over here anyway? I swear it, man. I'm not coming all the way out here just to change the channel for you two. Scooter has me doing manual labor, which is fine, since Maya is an expert at jury-rigging complex flying devices. The Firehawk, hearing of my glory, has asked for an audience, and who am I to deny such a request? Also, there's this Roland fellow that I'm supposed to find? Guess I could take a look around while I'm out anyway. I ran through every trap and leapt across chasms with no heed to caution. I bravely ran toward the fire... Hawk. It's just both. I stand around while the bandits clear themselves out, and she helps, I guess. But I'm, uh, getting to an issue. Badass psychos do a lot of damage as a general rule, but these... They're genuinely threatening my continued survival. At level 12, they pose a genuine risk to my health. Almost like shields are important or something. I have to take breaks between letting them hit me, but they're able to slowly die by way of... It hitting me. I guess they just feel such unimaginable fear that they kill over... Something. I don't know, I don't make the rules. Or... I don't make all of them. Anyway. Apparently Roland was out for a jog when he got lost. A local group called the Bloodshots thought it would be funny to pull a haha -ha on him and give bad directions. So nobody's really sure where he is. They said my car wasn't good enough though, and I'd have to get a slightly more tricked out ride that's almost identical mechanically to be let inside to talk to them. What a stupid concept for a quest. Good thing they'd only pull that once. I meet a nice lady named Ellie who offers to help put together said vehicle. I need to collect parts from enemy cars, which means destroying them myself. As I take repeating rounds from their turrets, it becomes more and more apparent the disparity in our health values. While enemy damage has always been dwarfed by their bloated health pools, I am now staring the numbers in the face. It takes multiple bars of my own lifeblood to inspire the required amount of fear in this butch mechanism to crash it into applicable parts. We're still... my regeneration rate is... terrible. It's... just terrible. Eventually though, I take enough missiles, bullets, and flaming saw blades to the face to get through. I make the modifications by hand, because Maya is, of course, an expert at car repairs. Good thing Ellie is here to operate the terminal that takes a few seconds to use. Or I wouldn't stand a chance in digitizing this vehicle for all the times that I won't use it. They finally deem me cool enough, and I gotta say, I'm not looking for their approval. Between Badmon and his friends, though, I felt the need to genuinely run and hide for the first time in the run. There really just weren't great places to stand without attracting everyone's attention. This build doesn't really have any way to single out enemies. You have insulted me on this day. Bloodshots, I rebuke thee. I rebuke thee. The entire bandit collective of Pandora has invoked my fury. You shall all pay recompense for your transgressions. And I immediately jumped on the heads of his hostages. This fight took entirely too long, and I was really grateful to see that when you reload the map, the key is just on the ground. No need to fight him again, because I'm not fighting him again if I don't have to. I've spent more than my fair share of time making my way through the stronghold, so it really wasn't hard, just traumatic. Taking out the top of the circular room was always just a terrible experience, and it's made worse by runs like these. During my rampage, though, I ran into some guy claiming to be Roland. I guess he was just hiding out in the place to avoid the authorities. The dude apparently was caught stealing a ton of protein supplements, trying to get gains as impressive as Maya's. He should have known. That's impossible. I figured I could still help the guy out and talk with the warden. Also wanted to be sporting though, so I gave the warden a head start. On my way to catch up, I almost landed on a guy who Dark Souls his way out of my way, just in time. A true gentleman and scholar. Or so I thought, because I instead landed on a nearby loader. An unfortunate turn of events, to be sure. I made my way back again, taking extra care to avoid the local loader population. And met with the robot of the hour. And by hour, I mean hours. You see, there's a lot to get into with this enemy. The most important aspect is the regenerating shield. I can deal damage to the warden. Very slowly, I can. Its shield will consistently regenerate long before I could ever hope to break it, because I simply don't have enough health to tank its attacks. For those who don't know, you can safely save and quit here as many times as you want, as long as the constructor doesn't leave. You never have to go to the gulag if you don't want to, assuming your build and equipment isn't pure garbage. I needed to test the logical extremes of this fight. Is it possible at any level? Is there gear that could make it doable? Well, I loaded up a level 70 copy of the save with a colon, which gives you the slag status just for holding it. Any amount of damage reduction actively reduces my maximum possible damage output, so making myself take more could theoretically be a solution. I figured if such a character with such a gun couldn't, then nothing could. After proving that it can be done at all, I switched up my methods to a level 70 character with nothing else. Once again, it can be done. Somewhere between level 26 and 70 is a Maya that can bring down the Warden. I manually farmed in Fight for Sanctuary for several hours. 
as it got longer and longer between levels, I had to know for sure. You can allegedly farm for enough experience to get to level 31 in under 24 hours, but it's not enough. You continue to get experience from the enemies being killed for a long time, so you can theoretically farm all the way up into level 35, but it's still not enough. Level 38 is the final level before numbers get really bad. And I mean really bad. And it's still not enough. You have to be so aggressively self-destructive that even level 40 just isn't enough. Maybe with the right relic, maybe with a lot of luck, but I found none. Even with it regenerating full, I was still dying too quickly. I was eventually able to get through at level 45. Just barely. So I decided to ask the internet. I figured I'd be happy to make a video for whatever people wanted to see on the matter, so I put out a poll. And the good majority of people who voted wanted to see the run, even if it meant using the save editor. So, what would it take to get a character to level 45 and fight for Sanctuary alone? Well, to get to level 45, you need a total of 2,553,501 experience. I already have about 610,840. This means 1,942,661 more. There's a 963,018 XP difference between level 38 and 45. For the purpose of this explanation, I'm going to be ignoring the 979,643 experience still required to get to level 38. The reason being simplicity and how bad these numbers already are without the extra 11 levels. From each enemy killed by Mordecai, you get a predetermined amount of experience based on the enemy killed and their level relative to yours. From 38 onward, it will always be the same all the way up to level 50, at which point you won't earn anything from any of them. Except maybe the pyros? Pyros have regenerating shields and are never worth the experience you get from them dying. If you're crazy enough to do this without editing files, then you should know that you should always just reload the area if Mordecai starts targeting a pyro. It's more time efficient than waiting for them to die. He can also hit multiple enemies with one shot, but there's not really a good way to account for that. His willingness to actually aim and shoot is also in flux. Sometimes he'll just stop shooting altogether, sometimes he won't stop shooting at all. These numbers will all be assuming that you somehow never see a pyro, he never shoots more than one enemy at a time, but he never stops shooting. So generally pretty ideal conditions. Now from a level 29 enemy, you get two experience with an average of two shots to kill them, or an average of one experience per shot. Level 30 enemies give you the same amount of experience, but at the cost of three shots to kill, or about two thirds of the value of the 29 target. Level 31 enemies get even worse, with about five shots, with some taking more and some taking less to kill, granting only three experience per kill, or about 0.6 per shot taken. But then it still gets worse. In my testing, Viper Sanctuary starts with you defending Sanctuary. Go figure. I needed to know how long you could spend there though. As far as I can tell, it's about 2 minutes, 36 seconds, or 156 seconds. Sometimes Mordecai will fire before you get out of the building. Sometimes he won't until you can see him. I generally had him shooting within the first 10 seconds of loading into the map. Without input slowing down the process, I got a theoretical minimum time on my setup of loading out of the game in 3 seconds and back in at 6 seconds, for a total of 19 seconds that are just wasted every rotation. Allowing a 5 second buffer room because I personally can't justify any less. Keep in mind the failing to deload the map even once means starting over entirely. Mordecai fires once every 3 seconds for a theoretical maximum of 47 shots per rotation of this farm. Each rotation lasts 160 seconds, or 2 minutes 40 seconds. Assuming he's hitting the optimal level 29 enemies, he would only be able to kill 23 of them, meaning a yield of 46 experience every 2 minutes 40 seconds. So to get from 38 to 45, it would require doing this farm perfectly 20,936 times, rounding up to account for the fact that close enough isn't close enough meaning this would take a minimum of around 3,349,760 seconds, or 38 days, 18 hours, 29 minutes, and 20 seconds to reach the desired level. Keeping in mind that this means total playtime. Not 38 days off and on, I mean you'd have to be playing the whole time. And again, this is optimal. Over 930 hours of playtime to reach our desired level. Assuming an even distribution of non-pyro enemies, you'd be faced with an average of 32.9 experience per run, or 54 days, 4 hours, 58 minutes, and 40 seconds. At the worst non-pyro situation, while still getting optimal shots from Morty, you'd be getting even worse, about 27 XP per run, for 66 days, 1 hour, 14 minutes, 40 seconds. All just devoted to farming experience. Just for fun, here's how long these same circumstances would take to get to level 50. It is entirely possible. But I can't really recommend literally anyone ever try. It's doable, but it's so far beyond not worth it that, well, this is what save editors are for, I guess. In case it's not abundantly clear, I increased my level from 27 to 45 and ran my face into as much damage as I possibly could to proceed. Even then, it was a slimmer margin than I would have liked. Mr. No Idea How to Navigate over here goes off about some ancient alien power capable of ending all life on Pandora, and I gotta ask, why is it that ancient weapons are always valued so highly? 
Has tech really not advanced past giant angry guard dogs? Like, my only means of combat is currently getting hit, but other people have, like, moonshot cannons and whatnot. You're telling me that orbital bombardments are beaten by Big Wolf? Turns out that getting hit is good enough for Varkids, though, since they light themselves on fire if you stand near enough to a fire melon. I have to wake up some guy I never met to get intel that is both wrong and incorrect. Before I can do anything about it, though, I have to help out a small child. She misplaced her belongings. It's super easy to just go in through the back or side and grab them. And I then help her to generously donate them to someone in need. In need of being blown up! This go around, I can't damage Wilhelm's drones in any way, shape, or form. And he gets his shields back faster than I can do damage with any of his attacks. So that's the end of the run. Even with a save editor. Is what I would say if this game wasn't made with code consisting of string cheese and half an eaten waffle that somebody left out over vacation drenched in syrup. Now it's covered in bugs. I'm not sure what caused it, but sometimes his drones will try to repair his shields continuously without actually adding anything. They don't really retry, so as long as you stay put, you can keep going until he dies. He doesn't even try to spawn his repair drones. This fight is just sitting still until his own inaction brings his demise via my inaction. I guess I sit still better than he does. Yeah, you'd think so, but here's you dying. This ain't even hard. In fact, it's too easy. So I reverted my level back to where it was before. They told me that the remote batteries I brought back earlier already died, so I swapped them out. They changed the channel, and Jack did not like that. He started bombing the city in retaliation, and Lilith vanished. She was here, and then she wasn't. Then she was, then I wasn't. Guess she felt intimidated by Maya's presence, which is understandable. Well, I'm not gonna let somebody else's envy keep me down. Get it? Because they're flying, which means they're up. And by process of elimination, that means directionally speaking, I must be- I got burned alive. Some medical experts would advise icing the wound in something like a fridge. These experts would likely be quacks because that would cause more harm than good. You shouldn't ever ice a burn. Rapid changes in temperature are bad for you, so you want to bring it back down a lot more slowly than ice would accomplish. Also, this place is still one of the fastest locations in any given normal mode run. I was informed that there's a ladder I've never seen in a place that I hate, and just like that, I resolved to never use the crappy sky bridge again if I can help it. I get across in an effort to get my house keys. Up next was a boss that can recover a shield quickly, efficiently, and does a ton of damage. It ate said keys, and try as I might, I couldn't get any of the local loaders to help defeat it. So Maya got to work with the biggest, most powerful muscle in her body. Her pinky toe. I mean, her brain. The loaders are unreliable and have guns. But you know what's incredibly reliable? The gluttonous thresher. I reliably hate it. I've never even been through here once without hating the whole experience. It also has an attack where it slaps itself repeatedly in the face just to freak you out, I guess. It does it more frequently when you or a loader is nearby. The tentacle seems to want to go further, but if you can keep it near the thresher, like so, it'll slap itself silly. So silly that it'll die laughing, and I can carry on. Gotta see if I can do that consistently, because if I can, then I know how I'm likely gonna be handling that sorry excuse for a fight in the future. I got my keys back, and when I tried to use them, Jack started throwing loaders at me. Didn't want him to waste his money, though, on having me break all of his bots effortlessly over my incredibly well-toned knee, so I instead dropped into a local bar to say hi, then left. I reloaded the area to fix my keys, because I guess they got a little chewed up by the thresher. While Maya is an expert in incredibly complicated repairs, I had to go back to the bar a handful of times to ask for some spare parts. Real friendly, those guys. Well, they finally worked. I made my way back home, and reminded the raiders that I'm not so easily gotten rid of. Since Shaq got so upset about our Trism programming, we wanted to ask him what he would suggest we put on instead. Hard guy to get a hold of, though, so since nobody else was doing anything about it, I dropped by a place I know he comes by from time to time. I had a hell of a time dealing with the bouncers. The level difference is wearing thinner by the minute, and there ended up being a lot of them, which made regenerating my health really hard. I even ended up dying. Or, uh, take, taking, a, taking a nap. Shut up. I eventually got through and also found out that they have bouncers inside. It was multiple layers of bouncers. I just want to know what you want to watch, Jack. Let me in. Let me in. I helped the bouncers take care of a local infestation of stalkers, and you'd think that would earn me some points, but no. They were ungrateful, and I got shot more times than I could count. The level difference was hitting harder than I could handle, and I decided that level 31 would be a somewhat reasonable compromise. You can reach it in under a day, after all. To clarify again, I manually leveled to 27. 31 was modified, but it is very possible. Just wanted to make sure you know. It's only fair that I'm honest with you. You think those things will do me in? I eat grenades for breakfast! The head bouncer popped his head in, and I was just getting tired of going around in circles with these guys. It got so bad, though, that even after clearing everyone else out, I was here long enough for the enemies to respawn, meaning it had more backup, so I died. I briefly considered if I might need to raise my level even higher, since I'm terrible at games and can't even beat some random enemy with my face-to-fist technique. But I knew it would work. There's no way that the monks would have trained me wrong on purpose, as a joke. So I dug in. If they were going to respawn allies, then so would I. 
If they weren't satisfied with me clearing out the stalkers, then I would take the fight to a territory where no other loaders would come to help. Fight on my terms. And by the time I got that idea, it was no longer relevant. No enemies respawned and the loader died. I stand by it being a good idea, though. I have pet some dogs and found myself in a big area with a big bird. It wanted to be pet too, but if Jack isn't here, then I've got places to be. Some fools might struggle with stupid means, like taking repeated hits to the face until the shield they're wearing malfunctions and explodes to the bird, but I... I took repeated hits to the face until its fear for having attacked me exploded the bird. Are you kidding? That's damage befitting a king! I don't remember the last time I was looking at such a comfortable Bloodwing boss fight. Bring it on, bird! Compared to every enemy before, that genuinely feels like a lot of damage. So, whatever that tells you about this run. Basically, any projectile move is ideal. Morty gives you healing. Basically, just run from the skags and wait for her to do herself in. Oh, well, now I feel bad. I drop by my buddy's place to drop off an upgrade or something. But... I'm faced with the hardest part of most of these runs. I'm, I'm sorry. I must go on. With no high fives exchanged. Truly, today is a dark day. Well, I've got to figure out where Jack is somehow, so I figure I should go ask Brick. I have to go in person because nobody responds to texts anymore. Honestly, he's talking to me via the echo net. Can't we just explain things? Like, Rowan can hear this. You're telling me they can't possibly just talk? I even went right up to him and nothing. Just looked at me. Fine, I'll do your stupid gauntlet. I figured the badass enemies here might be an issue, given that they have shields. This wasn't really the case. I have used the back of the arena, where nobody will follow you, and none of the enemies really know how to handle things. Slowly, I let the basic enemies pick themselves off, and then really aggressively push towards the enemies with shields. It took an incredibly unreasonable amount of time, but they eventually all went down, as did the Goliaths. And then I made my way out with a brick to once again let him handle the entirety of the area. Even if I wanted to help, he's too aggressive and does too much damage for me to meaningfully do anything. Which is good, because I really don't want to. Now, if this seems slow, if him breaking these beacons seems like this is going at an uncomfortable pace, I'd like you to know that this is some of the fastest combat progress I've gotten in a long time, and the fastest that I'll be seeing until heroes pass. Turns out, Brick doesn't know where Jack is either, and maybe he'll be in his own city? It's not nearly large enough to constitute a city, but nobody asked for me. I found a guy that claimed to be Jack, but certainly isn't, so I tried to ask him some questions, but he kept shooting me. That might seem like an overreaction, but it only got worse. He does a lot of damage, has a shield, and has a lot of backup. So I tried getting rid of the backup, I tried avoiding them, I worked at it for a while, and even did some real damage, until... he stopped. He stopped?! You can't give me the silent treatment, you jackhole! No! No! No, 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 no! I put up with a lot, and I mean a lot of rubbish, but no! You are going to move, and you're going to like it. He can just break at any moment, undoing all of your progress, and he can screw himself six ways to Sunday. I increase my level back up, because it may or may not be possible at my level. I don't care to try, knowing fully well that the boss can just hit a you-lose button whenever he wants, and there's nothing I can do about it. With my raised level, I was able to take more sustained damage, thus deal more, and pass through with relative ease. How the hell has this not been patched? I ran around the place picking up pieces of his phone number. It's unethical to steal his private information, sure, but it's also unethical to be such a dick, and yet, there he is. The whole gang gets together to go see him, and, well, every run theoretically has two issues to solve before even considering the rest of the rules. Taking damage and dealing damage. You can't continue to do much in terms of damage if you're dead, and you can survive forever, but you'll never win if you can't deal some. This build, if you can even call it that, struggles for both of these. I can barely take a hit because my shield only exists to give me a mild health buff. My damage is limited by my health, and it hardly scales at all when compared to what my enemies have and what they can deal. Conversely, their health scales really high, so even when I'm taking more damage than I can handle, I'm still hardly chipping away at them. So dealing with this constructor was a nightmare. I started this fight by intentionally facing it toward where I'd be hiding. I figured I'd need some way to do... something. And I spent a really long time dying to this repeatedly, getting so many enemies on me that I didn't stand a chance. It's normal missiles posed a genuine risk, and I just couldn't figure it out for a while. I ended up hiding behind the shipping container, and eating a healthy dinner of nukes. No, seriously, I couldn't find anything more effective than its nukes. Before it would hit me, I'd swap to a class mod that would give a higher chance to activate recompense. Afterwards, I'd swap to my class mod that gives a higher health regen, and hope like hell that I didn't take another hit from anything, because I only ever survived the nukes due to health gating. I did this for a while, also desperately hoping that it didn't spawn in enemies. Or at least ones that I couldn't ignore in one way or another. To be entirely fair, its nukes can actually help take care of the enemies around you, but it fires them really inconsistently, and if you get something like a bull loader here, you're kind of screwed. This took multiple loads of the map to get the right setup, but I eventually got it, and even having won, it just felt bad. Victory doesn't always taste sweet. Do you know what it was, though? 
I got to do something that I've been waiting to do for a long time. <laughs> Rod in hell, you buggy piece of high-tech trash. You will not be missed. Not only do I get to break these awful things, but I get to do it with the most vile, disgusting weapon that I could possibly use. I get to break them with them. And it felt glorious. Oh, yeah, and then the badass constructor nuked itself to death. Nothing new there. Onto the bunker. Or, I guess I need to take out the auto cannons first. It eh, shouldn't be a big deal, though, right? I just need them to shoot me. I just really need them to shoot me. Okay, what the hell? So it turns out the AI on these is absolutely horrible. Some of them will target you like you're the last slice of pizza in a selfish friend contest, and others will ignore you like all of the adults in my life ignored my emotional struggles growing up. I tried waiting an age and a half, but it seems like the buzzards just stopped targeting the turrets at some point. And then I died. And also, it was really late, I was exhausted, and I made no real progress. So I started again the next day, and spent the next two hours fighting the turrets. The bright side is that death doesn't mean restarting. It does mean that all surviving enemies get their health back. Turns out, every turret has somewhere they'll target you. Albeit somewhat inconsistently, but eventually, they went down. Alright, you bunker bastard. The last time I fought you may have been a royal pain in every fiber of my being. But this time, I technically have ranged options. You shall pose me no threat. Well, I suppose the feeling is mutual. Uh, great. There really isn't much to say here, except that you more or less have to try to get hit by the bunker. It does so little damage most of the time. The rest of the time, it can't hit you at all. I jumped on its mines. I did my best to get hit by its missiles. It was slow. It was painfully slow. It eventually pulled out its big gun, and guess what? It almost never hits. To get hit by it, I would intentionally back myself against walls because it wouldn't hit me, but the AoE would sometimes, maybe. The turrets did the most damage, but they were the most problematic for a few reasons. Whether or not they would hit consistently is entirely dependent on positioning of the boss. When they do, though, they drain health really quickly. Too much so, even. Especially because damage done to them doesn't hurt the bunker. It seems to do some damage when they break, but in a full cycle, they couldn't do enough damage to break themselves, and they heal when the bunker repositions. At one point, it just decided to stop participating in the fight for a hot minute, which was real neat. It was on the back half of the fight that I started using the two platforms next to the center of the arena. They can be used as cover from most enemies, which is a hell of a boon. They also give a clear line of sight between you and the boss. When I got into the right position, I would swap to my warder class mod, which gave a higher chance to trigger recompense. I would also remove my shield and exit my inventory. I would then put my shield back on. This would empty the shield, and let me keep my max health buff that I received from said shield. Because my healing is percentile based, it's really important for me to have. I also had an otherwise useless skill from Maya that buffed crit damage. Since all damage dealt to them is critical, this was the only time this will ever be relevant. With all of these together, I was able to break the turrets, doing slightly more damage. I would do a similar technique to intentionally drop my shield with a great many fights, as I have even before this. It was never quite as important as it was here, though. After the fact, I would always swap back to my class mod that gives a higher max health and regeneration rate. I was constantly in my inventory to swap things around, and I gotta say, not a fan. I fought. I hoped. Combat went back and forth between it and I. And while my attempts were few and fruitful, I don't think I could really convey to you accurately just how poorly this went. Just how slowly the time crept by. The depths to which this fight hurt me. What words could I string together so softly as to convey the scar that the bunker has left on my shriveled soul? Dear viewer, kind person who has been with me through this journey, who has given meaning to my suffering, who has been my unheard, unseen companion through my struggles, every moment I spent, every task I took, I did so considering you, thinking of the time that we could finally spend together where I could pour out my heart to tell you the tale of Maya, to answer a question that you never asked, to regale you with the lengths I would push myself that I might earn from you but a chuckle. A smile, even just a quick exhale of air in the place of a hearty laugh. I yearned for it, because it fills me with a joy that I can't really explain. But I found myself lacking, but for these. I am left with no words adequate but to explain that the final attempt at this boss took around three and a half hours. For one godforsaken fight, it took me three and a half hours. Firmly placing this as the single longest boss fight I've ever put myself through. And I want to be very clear that I never want to see its record beaten. I just need a break. As it fell, I wished. I dreamed of the satisfaction of having bested my foe. 
I searched all of my being for some scraps of delight, and I found my emotions barren. Here there is no glory. There is not victory nor release from the nightmare. There is merely more suffering. For though I have destroyed the bunker, though it's wholly split in twain, so too has it ripped a part of me that is never to return. It has plunged to a depth from which I can never reclaim what has been lost. Here there is nothing. Before to which I cannot return, all that's left is forward. So forward, I must go. Into Control Core Angel, I ventured, knowing fully well what laid before me. This was the thought I held close. As dread filled my every breath, I clung to the idea. That somewhere in my past, my experience, I knew how far down the rabbit hole would lead. Nothing could hurt me quite the same. The thought that echoed through my mind again and again as an hour would pass. I chopped away at seemingly endless numbers of foes I could hardly hope to face. It would be after an hour and twenty minutes, to be more precise, that I ran into an unexpected issue. The pipes are immune to melee, sometimes. I didn't bring a gun for me for what should hopefully be obvious reasons, but I panicked. To reset an hour and twenty minutes in to an inanimate object. Or my favorite breakfast item. Of course! For whatever reason, they could still be broken by a square meal. So with that, I pressed on, resolute. Surely Roland and Lilith would help to bear my burden. If this was not to be a fast trial by myself, then they would be my salvation. And while they did help to ease the agony, they could not stop the THREE CONSECUTIVE HOURS IN CONTROL CORE ANGEL! MY SKIN IS MORE HOLES THAN SWISS CHEESE! WHY ARE YOU DOING THIS TO ME? WHAT DID I DO TO DESERVE THIS? WHAT WENT SO WRONG TO LEAD ME HERE? THE ENEMIES! THEY DIE SO SLOWLY! AND I SO QUICKLY! I'M STILL MOVING FORWARD, WHICH MEANS THAT IT WILL END, I JUST HAVE TO GET THERE TO SEE IT MYSELF. TO FREE MYSELF OF THESE CHAINS PLAGUING MY MIND. GENUINELY, I WAS LOSING SLEEP OVER THIS RUN. It was all I could think about. It was all that I could do. I couldn't escape it until I knew for sure. I wanted to do something unrelated to Borderlands this week, and I just couldn't handle leaving this unfinished. Also, I'm never going to get another good chance to talk about this. The traps around the room cannot be hurt by recompense. They can trigger it, though. Sometimes when they hit you, the game will act as though one of the enemies in the room is the source of the damage for the purpose of recompense. I have no idea why or how, but this was relatively consistent. Even the flame vents triggered it. If nothing else, it was a safer way to clear out the enemies here. I finally found him. Now, what channel would you prefer to watch if it's such a big deal to you? Whoa, that's... kidnappy. I don't know how to say this, but I think Jack might be a bad guy. Well, I guess I should put a stop to that. I try to go after him, but get some bad directions. I'm directed to the Iridium Blight, when I should have been directed to Sawtooth Cauldron. I used the elevator as cover to protect myself from all manner of things, only popping out to allow my blood to be let to drain theirs. It took around half an hour to kill four enemies. It may not exactly be basic enemies, but the level advantage is gone. I can't survive them on normal terms anymore. The only thing that can reliably protect me from their melee attacks is the health gate. I dismantled Boombringer because Maya knows exactly how to do that sort of thing with flying machines. Next was five buzzards. I dropped my own shield before missiles could hit me, got lucky with enemy spawns after several area reloads, spent a bit over an hour breaking five glorified RC helicopters. Honestly, Sawtooth Cauldron is one of my least favorite parts of the entire game. I was really happy that it only took an hour to bring him down. Turns out, I got some really bad directions because I was actually supposed to go to the Boneyard. I had to take care of a plumbing issue for reasons. Good thing Maya's expertise is completely inconsistent. Well, it turns out I got some really bad directions because I was actually supposed to head to the Badlands. Now, I don't know what video you've been watching to think for even the tiniest possible fraction of a second that I was going to willingly fight Saturn. My spirit may be in tatters, but my legs are both working, and they carried me. God, did they carry me as fast as I could possibly force them to. I made my way into the info stockade and grabbed what I came here for as I clung on to what little life the Explorer left me with. And it turns out I need to get a new navigator because I've never gotten worse directions in my life as I was supposed to go to the Iridium Blight to go to Heroes Pass. I knew this was going to be bad. I knew it was going to be bad, but I desperately hoped that for once, just for once, this run would grant me mercy. Need I explain more of the depths of its cruelty? Need I explain that hot loaders can end my existence with but a thought? Need I explain the problematic nature of the surveyors that would spawn in repairing the little progress I had made? I dealt with them by simply waiting for them to walk back every step that I took to break themselves over the crumbling rock that is Maya. Need I explain the badass loaders and the missiles that they hold? Their ability to drop my health like a large bowl of freshly, beautifully cut potatoes into a vat of hot, awaiting oil. To be fried and devoured mercilessly by the ravenous maw that is fight for your life. For when you fall, you may not stand. And also, I really need to start eating before writing my scripts. I am starving. I got multiple hot loaders, war loaders, and a badass loader all at once. My hope was either to eliminate the badass or the hot loaders to ease the number of things that I had to pay attention to. Both had specific attacks that I couldn't afford to be hit by. Avoiding multiple things with multiple audio cues when my brain is this fried... 
salty. Right, when, when I was already struggling to hang on to my sanity, it was a lot to manage. The Rex would respawn, and I swear some surveyors would even respawn. But the door turrets? Nope. Couldn't even give me that one. Hope that 20 minute intervals would give me some sort of hope. I threw myself at this door for 3 hours and 34 minutes before it would give way. My body is more lead than flesh! Same as before, I simply let Brick and Mortar handle all of these mandatory enemies. Brick revealed himself to be a wizard. Not a particularly efficient one, but I suppose casters needn't explain themselves to common folk. I'm not really sure what went wrong with the scripted section, but it provided some drollery to an otherwise bleak situation. Then I ran like my life depended on it, because it did. This was realistically my one shot of getting through Heroes Pass without dying on loop. Finally, it was time to face Jack. I had enough time fighting him that I knew that it was theoretically possible if I could get him alone. But things got weird. I spent half an hour getting his shield down. He got his shield drone, which blew itself up. Still not sure why it does that, but it isn't in my way for long. He threw down turret after turret, each fully capable of tearing me to shreds. I honestly didn't know he could spawn in so many. I think I counted at least six in play at once. I'm sure he could have kept going too, except his AI just... stopped. It just stopped working. I figured a higher capacity for damage might do the trick, and I increased my level to try and sidestep the AI issue. I got the same weird issues though, and he just stopped working entirely. Can it be done? Maybe? As long as the single buggiest boss in the game doesn't break. And this is where I gave him some cereal. Strangely enough, it broke him out of his break. He does next to no damage in his second phase. I eventually started standing in the slag ray to increase his damage. His turrets took care of themselves, and he... he did almost nothing. He could only do an appreciable amount of damage when he threw out mines, which I promptly threw myself into. He kept doing a weird stutter step thing constantly. Seriously, how has he not been patched? On the bright side, he didn't break again, so I got to keep the rest of the food for myself. For the record, each individual tick is doing about as much damage as jumping on enemies. You can see how quickly the turret's health isn't depleting, and how many ticks there are. So if ever there's something wrong enough with me to ever attempt the jump only run, then I just want everyone to know that I refuse unless I am being paid by the hour. On every level, that run can go screw itself. Even with my increased level, he took an additional hour and 20 minutes. Funny enough, I spent about another hour and 20 minutes fighting the warrior. I briefly considered lowering my level again, but its fire breath was basically the only attack that did any real damage. And I was genuinely at risk of dying despite my level. And it still took as long as it did. And then... It just stopped moving entirely. Another boss that just stopped. I threw some healthy oats its way, and figured I could maybe finish it off with jumps or something, just because when my power went out. So I increased my level to the theoretical fight for Sanctuary maximum, redid the entire fight to see if maybe I could eke out just a bit more damage, and... no. It stopped again. So I threw what little I had left, because you need food to live and I'm dead on the inside, and in doing so, finished invalidating the run and saying that no, as far as I can tell, you can't beat Borderlands 2 with only recompense. Because this game is a dick that screwed me over the last possible encounter. Bright side, that means it definitely can't take on True Vault Hunter mode, and I don't have to do it. Mine did get pretty dang far though, farther than you'd maybe think at least. It would take a lot of training to be so incredible, which she would have on Athenus. So in conclusion, the events of Borderlands 3 are a load of horse hockey propaganda because she could have absolutely defeated both of the Clips of Twins literally without moving. Yeah, I'm still mad. Maya is incredible, to a ridiculous degree. You try this run, she can go through hell and come out the other side singing. Don't, actually. To date, this was the single most painful run I've ever put myself through, and I can't recommend it on any level to anyone. On that note, though, I hope you enjoyed your time here. Genuinely, I really hope you got something out of this, because this hurt on every level. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I'll get to hear your thoughts now and on any future outings. Until then, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.